rather impromptu video not a crash the stash or a Sunday inspiration or creative team just something fun um, most of you know that I am part of the deco art media design team and um, they sent me this last couple weeks the pour the new pouring medium and the top coat and so I thought I would just turn on the camera and let you watch me play with this I've not done this before I have gone on YouTube and looked at some videos to get some tips and different things like that but I wanted to just kind of share with you what I was doing and maybe you could learn it sounds fun I'm excited so we'll see um, but I wanted to just explain a few things of what I've got going on here and I'm sure you've probably seen this all over YouTube and everything but um, this is kind of my method of what I'm doing so I've got some parchment paper down underneath my surf on my surface here to so that the paint doesn't adhere to my surface um, I've got a um, this is actually a lid to a tin pan um, I've got a cup to support my substrate here and this is a, my regular MDF this is an 8x10 I've covered it with gesso and then I'm gonna experiment because you know we just can't do the regular old regular pour so I've got some other things that I'm gonna do do I've got some things in mind we'll see where it goes these this is um, just regular cardboard that I've covered in gesso I've got some tags that I've covered in gesso and then I've got some chipboard that I have covered in gesso so I've got a few things up my sleeve who knows you get to see the, the failures and the successes um, you know real time here so um, so I've got that set up this is the pan is so that the paint will drip over hopefully I you know you have to adjust the size of your drip pan to the size of your what you're working on so I didn't go any larger because I didn't have any larger pans at home so then I've just got some plastic cups and um, what I've got here and I hope you can see this maybe it's better better like that so the clear I, um, according to the directions and deco arts got a um, video up on their website to kind of give you the basics for their pouring medium so I am going to be using a combination of fluid and and um, craft paints these are all deco art and according to their directions it's one to one basically so paint here pouring medium here now if you want more cells they said you add more pouring medium I want all the cells I can get so I'm going to be doing a little bit ex of experimenting that way as well so I've got five cups out here and I've kind of marked them where my paint and my pouring medium will go and I'm going to kind of stick close to it's kind of the primary color wheel a version of that so I'm going with um, blues and I'm gonna mix these two together fluid acrylic and regular craft paint fluid acrylic cobalt teal and my favorite sea breeze craft paint and then so I've got the blues the greens and the reds <clears throat> and I'm going to be using um, quinacridone magenta if I have any in here I might have to mix a craft paint with this and then quinacridone violet so and then black and white and I'm gonna pour more of the black and white um, because those are neutralizing colors and they're always great ground base tones for anything so that is my plan now who knows how this will all go um, since I've never done this before I'm so excited I have out um, these were you can use craft sticks I had these in my cupboard there you know everybody's got like the leftover knives or spoons or whatever from the plastic silverware packs so I'm just going to use those and each one will go in a cup to store store stir hmm. so and then where's my other cup at I got um, here we go so then I'm going to use this cup and pour each of my colors into I'm going to do what they call a dirty pour 
you could just pour the individual colors which I've seen but I really want it just to be kind of messy and I want those cells I want as many cells as possible to form so I'm gonna do a dirty pour and you you go like that and then lift the cup up and then see what happens so that is the plan so we'll see how it goes um, since I've never done this before so let's uh, oh the other thing too is you want to have a lot of space because if you're doing your setup here and you're taking the time to get the pan set up and all that kind of stuff create as many as you possibly can you might as well so that's why I've got a bunch of different things that I'm trying to create with I've got two of these boards that I've gessoed and all the other creative stuff and who knows what I'll come up with in the midst of creating all of this so have a lot of space to be able to to lay your um, your items so once th they need like a that you need to be able to set this aside and just let it drip for a while. So I have several, I have several pans. These are the pans and the lids that I'm going to be working from. And the other thing is, I never wear gloves ever, ever, ever. Um, but I'm going to be wearing gloves today just because this is really, really messy. One other thing that I'm going, I'm use, and I'm using parchment paper to cover all of my surface surfaces that I'll have my paint drying on and stuff like that. So um, these are heavy duty gloves. I use them if I'm working with any really really harsh chemical stuff. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is as I did some research online because I want as much cells as possible I'm going to add just a tiny bit of dish soap to my mixture. The pouring medium already creates some cells if you add it more, but I want I want it all. <laughs> so we'll I'm gonna experiment a little bit and add some just regular regular Dawn dish soap um, into my cups or maybe even into my one major cup for the pour. We'll see. Um, and I think that's kind of all of the basic info and then I'll give you you know if there's stuff that comes up as I'm creating um, you know I'll, I'll do a, a title or something down in the video so let's get started So my first pour, I am 100% blown away. This is fantastic. You saw me use my heat tool and in some of the videos they say that you can use a torch <laughs> to help um, some of the cell formation happen. 
um, I don't have a torch and I don't trust myself with a torch so I decided to use my heat gun and you could tell as soon as I hit this area specifically those cells started to form um, and I did find out too that it's a good way that heat tool is a good way to kind of move the paint to the edges because like when I was adjusting things and moving things around I didn't want to lose certain parts as it slid off the edge but I needed to get it to the edge so lesson here is save a little bit in your cup and I still have a little bit left in there and and go around the edges so that I mean if you want to move it because sometimes you, there is an area that you might not like um, you can move it and drip it off the edge um, but save some so that you can go around the edge in case you want to keep exactly what you have and so this is going to continue to change as it dries and more cells I mean it is just let me see let me try to zoom in here really quick <clears throat> See if you can see. Let me scooch this out. I mean, oh, yes, this one, this little splotch, I wanted more turquoise. So I put black in first because they say that the first color that you put in is usually the most predominant, which is true. Um, and I wanted that black to be a ground, but I didn't get, like I don't see any of the blue um, unless the blue and the red mixed together and made that kind of purple, which could be a possibility. Um, so I'm going to try some more blue and less black, more turquoise. And I, at the last minute, mixed up this yellow, and I'm so glad I did, because that variation in there is just fantastic. Look at that. I'm so happy. And so as this continues to dry, I'm going to hit it with a heat tool a little bit more. As this continues to dry, more and more of those cells and things will start to form. You know what else I wanted to try, too? Hmm. Let's, let's try this. I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, I think that's in focus here. I wanted to try and see... So this is alcohol. It's like a scientist. You're just in the lab experimenting. Not much. Doesn't. Oh well. I take that back. It's slow. Yeah. So you would. You could have some. Some good control with some spots. Oh, that's pretty awesome. In that black. That's pretty amazing right there. This, this could be like jelly printing where you just keep going and going and going and going. So I'm going to hit it with the, my heat tool again to see what other cells I can kind of bring up and then I'm going to move on.
Okay, so totally different look. I put the colors in differently. I was determined to get a little more blue, but I put the blue and then the yellow in, and I knew that I was going to start to get some green in the, <clears throat> those two mix. I did less black, which I hardly got any black, so I added a few bits, pieces here, which I'm not thrilled about. So I don't know if I can move. That's kind of cool. Kind of move that around a little bit. I don't. I like that. That's kind of a cool effect. So I don't want to mess with it too much because I really actually love. I love the cells that formed here, and I'm not the the science. I don't know why. Um, just you'd have to do it over and over and over again to really learn what works best with what. I did add the dish soap right into the um, paint. I'm sure the purists of pouring are going, what the heck are you doing? But this is fun and so why not try it? And it immediately caused this chaos to happen, which I love, love, love. It's these cool cells right in here. Mm. So again, this is going to continue to change and sell up and I'd use my heat tool to kind of swoosh things around a little bit and get things moving. Um, I used more yellow this time which I'm not necessarily a fan of and I did it in different orders too. So <clears throat> lesson, 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 keep keep track of you know what like I sh if, if I were going to be doing this on a regular basis I would write down, I would make sure I journal, like I did this first, this first, this first, and, and the amounts, like how much, um, just so that you have an idea of for each piece what would work. So, but otherwise, if you don't want to do that, just have fun because the, how, you can't, how can you get this any other way? So, oh, it just makes me so happy. So, I'm going to get a couple more substrates prepared because I was only going to do two, but I'm like, I'm going to do some more and then we're going to do some fun stuff with my papers and my cardboard. So. A new board here and it I did not just with this one I just put matte medium on it to seal it I don't know if that'll make any difference at all but I'm gonna do something different with this I'm gonna create my pork create my dirty pour pour it out and then kind of let it do its thing and then I'm gonna come back and use this kind of as a plate and lay my tags down in it and see what I get along with some of my chipboard papers here. We'll just see. Who knows? I have no idea what uh, what we're gonna get. 
So what I do need though is I better get my surface prepared for these tags to get on. So I'll do that and then we'll come back and create the, create the port. So this is my piece of cardboard. This is just a um, cardboard box that I tore apart and cut down and I have gessoed both the front and the back and the sides. I tried to get down the sides. I don't know how this will hold up, um, but it'll be fun. It's This is all an experiment, right? It's all about having fun. And if this works, this is a great alternative for using your pores for, say, um, art journaling or um, any kind of project um, because cardboard is pretty sturdy and you can do all kinds of things. You could cut hearts. You could, I mean, possibilities endless. So I've already did. I've already done my pour and I did a really tiny one. So I don't know if I have enough or not. Um, so we'll just see. Oh, I don't have enough. That's okay though. Every every chance is a learning, I swear, a learning experience. And I keep I'm like trying to figure out the key to getting the right color. And I kind of feel like that the color that shows up the most is either the second or third color. But even this, like just this right here would be a great background for to like to stick in an art journal or on top of another piece of art so that's pretty cool I like that just like that and then being able to do some fun things around it I'm getting all kinds of ideas so I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to do this one really quick. Let me... Thank you. 
So for this last little bit, I've got this my pan here full of goodness. And I've got my paint that's left over. And I am just going to just go all in here. I've got some some pages here that I'm just going to that uh, vintage um, music sheets, some vintage wallpaper, scrapbook paper, um, whatever else I can find and I'm going to start dipping and see what I get for that. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to go So I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna put it all. Just just don't be afraid, right? Just do it. And I'm gonna go. to do so you saw we did all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff today the last thing I'm going to do is I've got my uh, parchment paper down here and it's my messy mess maker paper the last thing I'm gonna do this out on here and I'm glad super glad I wore gloves got to remember where I'm at here this dry and it can be I'm gonna try to peel it up off the parchment paper see if I can create like a skin I don't know if that will work or not if not the parchment paper will be cool enough to use and thin to use in any project but just like a jelly print this dry and then I'll show you the end results all right so things have almost dried but um, I'm gonna show you them almost dry <laughs> because I think I've got a little bit of, of time left to go but uh, some things I absolutely love and some things eh, not so much but this was all about playing and learning and there's a so the depth of this uh, paint pouring obviously can go very very far and this is just scratching the surface 
So my tags, I positively love them. Those are just fantastic. I would read, I would do this all over again just to make up a bunch of tags. These would be so great for gifts, for for your art journals, for oh, they're just lovely. The back not so much, but that's fixable. So tags, yes, yes, yes. So my cardboard experiment. This one is just it faded a lot. Um, and I'm not sure why. I think I think because it was cardboard, even though I gessoed it, I think it really sucked in the moisture and it kept it from um, really doing its thing. But even still, this is still a lot of fun. This could still make a great like insert for a background or something like that. You can even peel off that top layer. There's so many different things that you can do. This one, it didn't do like it started to do some of its thing, but where I hit it with the dryer, it started to crackle, which, oh, hello, yes. And then I also thought that, this is still still wet even, um, that I've got these little circles where the dryer hit it. I thought, hmm, I could make do this background and then hit it with the dryer and create flowers. So that'll be, a, that'll be another experiment. And then my papers, oh, who doesn't, this is just yummy goodness. I think you can probably hear the thunder in the background. It's pouring down rain and I've got the window open so I hope it doesn't disturb you. Um, but this will be used in all kinds of things. This is along the lines of my jelly print. Just mm, happy happiness. Some of these are still wet and I've got them in between. Um, they're not complete, but look at that. I, I don't think the camera sh will show you exactly how wonderfully fantastic these are. This one's still pretty wet. But, oh, that's like the galaxy or, I don't know. It, it just makes me happy. So, so those on papers, on scrapbook paper, all yes, yes, please, and yes. Okay, so let me set this aside here. Did I just take that out of its place? I did. Okay. I got papers everywhere. All right, so this one is probably my least favorite but it is also the one that I used as my plate for putting my papers on so it got moved around a lot but it's still wonderfully fantastic and the graining and just all of the wonderful things just you can't duplicate that so again all of these are going to be backgrounds I'm going to either scan them and use them as papers or create on top of them there's cracks, there's cells, there, and this one's my least favorite so Hang on to your hats. So let's see. So this one is super light, but all of the different patterns and cracks and different things in here. Oh, yes. And I'm doing these in order too, because I think this, um, this one was the second to last. This one was the next, the next one. And I just, this is beyond fantastic. I just, I can't even, I don't even know how to explain it. And it's still, there's still spots that are wet. So I better stop playing, fondling it. <laughs> but I just, oh. And then this one, this was the very first one that I did. Get that in the camera. I'm trying to give you a close-up. The very first one that I did, and my absolute favorite. And um, once I go back to do this again, I'm going to keep better track of, what paints I did first and that kind of thing but I just love all of the different cells all the cracks all the veining it's just delightful so that is my first pour for pouring paint pouring um, and paint pouring medium and I used the deco art and I'll have links to that and then I'm going to use these, either these or a scanned image of these in a project for DecoArt for their blog. 
so be watching for that I will let you know when I have that available so you can sh so you can see what you can actually do with some of these um, just gorgeous gorgeous pieces all right loves I hope you enjoyed this have a great day